Since he was a little boy, San Francis was aware. God's love was everywhere. gently falls over the little town of Greccio, leaving a blanket of white as far as the eye can see. Bells begin to chime to announce the eve of Christmas. This is the home of John, a nobleman who followed the teachings of our little Saint Francis and sought first to be noble in his heart. Little did John know that he would help start a tradition that would be carried out for centuries. Hello, Francis and Friar Bernard. What a warm surprise on such a winter day. What can I do for you? John, tomorrow's Christmas Day. Let's celebrate by creating a nativity scene here in Greccio. This way, we can remember how God came to Earth as a baby and see how he was born in a lowly manger in Bethlehem. And then we will see with our own eyes how the God who created the world slept in a bed of straw with his mother Mary, Joseph, and all the animals. Isn't it amazing, Francis? Our God became one of us in the humblest way possible, in a manger. Wow, you're both so excited. <laughs> what a good idea. I would love to help you, but what is a nativity scene? A nativity scene is a place where birth happens, and the birth of Christ is the most important. But as the three set out to build the first nativity scene, the day grew colder and the snow more intense. Bernard and John began to worry a snowstorm was on its way. But Francis remained focused on his goal. These snowstorms are becoming more and more common. Every year our cornfields and vineyards are devastated. What do you think we should do, Francis? We're not going to be able to assemble the manger. Have faith, John. Everything will happen the way our Lord desires. With these finishing touches, I think we've finished the stable. Don't you think? Whew. Yes, Bernard. We did it. friends, we are preparing a Christmas celebration here in Greccio. <laughs> Come and join us. We are making a beautiful manger, my friends. I will explain to you, brothers, the greatness, the beautiful birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. The villagers gathered around St. Francis as he began to explain to them the mystery of the birth of the Son of God. They listened with curiosity, but didn't seem to really understand. As the storm approached, they became increasingly concerned. And as it grew colder, many of the villagers began to leave to seek shelter in their home. Francis, these people aren't able to understand. They're distracted by the storm that's coming. They're starting to leave. What do you think we should do? Hmm, let's keep going. I have an idea. Go with John to find the abandoned chapel in the woods and bring me the figure of the boy that's there. Got it, you can leave it to us. Francis wanted to find a simple, more engaging way to explain to the remaining villagers the story of Christmas. <laughs> Let's see, what do we need for a stable? Here, this is Mary, and this is the cow. With love and joy, Francis told the story in a way the villagers could understand. All 
right, my friends, I'm gonna need your help. We're gonna need a manger, straw, an ox, and a donkey. That's all that's missing. The villagers looked at each other with uncertainty, but quickly arranged everything St. Francis requested. Then, an awful snowstorm hit the town. St. Francis and the few villagers there struggled to keep everything in order until Friar Bernard and Friar John returned. The winds were freezing, but not enough to freeze the heart of St. Francis, who served everyone there and kept them safe. Have courage, John. We're almost back. Meanwhile, John struggled to make his way through the snow and strong winds. Bernard went to help his friend. Suddenly, they were both frozen, but not from the cold of the storm. Mysterious eyes had appeared in the darkness around them. A gust of wind blew out the lamp, and they could no longer see through the thick snow. John? John? On second thought, I'm still shivering, but this time it's not from the cold. Be careful, uh. Bernard. This is the pack of wolves that recently attacked our village. Run! Run! John and the friar ran as fast as they could. Bernard held on tight to the figure of the boy, with the pack of wolves not far behind. Just when they thought they couldn't run anymore, they spotted the town of Greccio in the clearing. I can see Francis and the others! We're almost there! But the wolves! We can't lead them into the village. You don't have to worry. Francis will know what to do. They're getting closer. We won't make it. <gasps> the wolves stopped dead in their tracks. Friar Bernard and John couldn't believe their eyes. Rabbits? Yes, rabbits had appeared out of the ground and began throwing snowballs at the wolves with amazing precision and force. This is our chance, John! John and Bernard pressed on towards the village, but the rabbits couldn't hold the wolves for long. Ah! Hmm. Francis, what are we going to do? We can't stay here! The wolves made their way into Greccio. St. Francis went to the manger and knelt before the figure of baby Jesus. Then, as the wolves made it to the stable, bells began to chime. Glorious ringing filled Greccio. It was midnight. Christmas was here. And then, a great miracle. To the amazement of all who were there, the figure of the baby Jesus came to life and was bathed in light. Francis delighted himself in the God who delighted in him. A Christmas miracle, indeed. As soon as the vision swept before their eyes, it was gone. Only a wooden figure lay in the straw of the nativity scene. However, the goal of Francis to celebrate Christmas in a new way and bring the story of Christ to life had been blessed. Even the wolves worshiped. Those who were there felt as if Christ had been reborn in their hearts and in their soul they carried a living memory of the child Jesus smiling. With new understanding, Francis shared with the villagers the importance of God becoming human for us. To this day, the people of Greccio still set up the St. Francis nativity scene each Christmas with the hope that the miracle would be renewed. Although the figure of Christ has never again come to life, the memory of the miracle and the words of St. Francis give them hope that they will one day see the face of Christ in full. Still, the figure of Mary, Joseph, and the baby Jesus speak to their souls with love and tender grace as they celebrate Christmas Mass. But this hope isn't reserved for just the people of Greccio. What a great gift you have given us, Francis. We will be forever grateful. Pass on what you have seen to everyone. 
May we share this grace that we have witnessed with others, so that everywhere a child is born, so will be the presence of baby Jesus, with Mary, his mother, and foster father, Saint Joseph, waiting to receive them with a smile and a blessing. I don't like goodbyes. Don't worry, Bernard. As soon as possible, we'll be back for a visit. I'll be waiting. Peace and love, Brother John! The Lord has come, the Lord has come. Our Lord has come, our Lord has come. Thank you, friend! Peace and love, my Brother John! Peace and love, my friends. Peace and love, my friends.